Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys of Magic. This is Hunter, David, Steven, and Shane. Say what up, guys. How's it going, everybody? I'm still moving. What's up, nerds? Uh, we are back, this time with more Modern Horizon... No. More uh, Assassin... <laughs> no. More Bloomboro spoilers. Uh... That's right. We're here with Bloomboro this time. Uh, I feel like it's been... That was a long week since you looked at me. <laughs> I mean, tomorrow na, 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 we'll be na, na, doing na, na. Duskborn, right? Yeah, and the day after that one's Dragon Ball Z. Awesome. We'll probably be doing Modern Horizons 4 next week. No, luckily those are every other year. Those ones are actually pretty uh, cool. Yeah. Well, again, this is Bloomboro, though. This is a set that has actually been hyped up since it was first announced because of all the little critters. Mm -hmm. Very cool art as well. It was the release stream today, the first kind of look of preview season so throughout this week and next week we will be talking of every single day about preview cards from bloomborough so let's go ahead and get started this is a long video this first card is alania divergent storm it's three a blue and a red for a three five legendary creature otter wizard it says whenever you cast a spell if it's the first instant spell the first sorcery spell or the first otter spell other than alania you've cast this turn you may have target opponent draw a card. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Otter spell. Love Otter it. spells. Love Seems it. to be a running theme with this set of giving your opponent's card draw. Well, it's all about being friendly. I mean, we, we talk all the time about how much we love giving our opponent's card draw. I love giving you guys everything. This is the first card we're talking about. What do you mean a running theme? Oh, no, 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 not just for this video or for this set, but just in general. It's like we, we talk about it all the time about how like giving your opponents resources is definitely how you win a game of magic. Yeah, but copying yeah. spells is really strong. You know what? Copying spells is really strong, except for whenever they potentially draw into their kill spell or counter spell or their combo piece. Or I don't like letting them draw. Also, <laughs> this is a five drop. This, this is, is an engine. <laughs> it's a cute yeah. otter. It is a cute otter. Almost looks like Rao. We'll get to that in a minute, but... Oh. Yeah. Um, interesting card. I don't know if this actually sees any play in Standard. There's a lot of Spell Slinger is it decks, and I don't think this is going to be one of them. Is it? Is it? Funny. I already said the thing, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll talk to this as a potential commander when we do our commander grades, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, but... Starting off with Alenia is pretty interesting. Storming. Cute. Pretty cute. Let's move on to another card with a new mechanic. It's called Kidnap. It's two and two blue for an enchantment aura. It says gift a card. That is right. It's a new mechanic. You may promise an opponent a gift as you cast this spell. If you do, when it enters, they draw a card. Enchant creature. It also says when Kidnap enters, tap enchanted creature. If the gift wasn't promised... Put three stun counters on it. You control enchanted creature. A weird way to spell kicker. <laughs> I mean, it's, kicker. it's a gift. There are a couple different mechanics in this set that are brand new that are all kind of kicker. And yes, <laughs> gift a card is kicker. Give something to your opponent. That's the downside. Instead of paying more mana, you gift something. So in this situation, you're gifting them a card. To steal their thing. I mean, you're stealing it regardless. You are stealing it regardless. Yeah. But if you steal it without gifting, it's stunned for three turns. It's a bummer to remove those counters. I was going to say, actually, I, I think this one's fine. Coming at it four mana, even if you don't give the gift, like you're still taking their creature away. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is really cool. I like the way if it says, like, if it wasn't promised, I, I kind of wish that you could say, I'm going to gift it to you and then choose not to gift it to them. Like as this, I don't know the way that's there's, worded. There's like no time for that. Though. I don't. I don't know. You're, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna give this. It, it takes you back. Yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. like in between phase or period. <laughs> That'd be really cool though. In standard, I think this might be cool with maybe like a glissa because that does damage and you can remove up to three counters from a target permanent. That'd be cool. Would be cool. Grand. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of different colored mana, and especially with two blue pips here, but. It's just an I option. Mean, I'm kind of here for it regardless. I mean, even if you let them have the card draw, if they're going to waste their turn using their mana to get rid of their creature, I'm not I'm not mad at it. 
I don't know. I, I think this is cute. It's one of those, like, I'll play this in EDH because it's, like, somewhat blue removal, but in, in a faster constructed format, something like standard format, it is a lot. There's some cute flavor here, guys, because a baby raccoon's name is a kit. He's getting kidnapped. Well, what is a cool, cat? Man. Cat is, is a, kit a yeah? kitten. I don't know. No, that's move not on. A baby cat. You're right. We, we broke him. <laughs> I will say though, if you play this on someone's Shieldred and you gift a card, you're taking the Shieldred and then they're losing life because they're drawing. Because <laughs> now you have Shieldred. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Two, two damage is still not worth a card draw. I wouldn't. What they're at two health though, Dave. All right, cool. In that <laughs> very specific instance, then yes, that works. That's but outside point. of that, yeah, no. Let's move on. Next up is a Calamity Beast. It's Biza, the Bounding Spring. 2-2 two, two white for a 4-5 legendary creature, Elemental Elk. It says, when it enters, create a treasure token. If an opponent controls more lands than you, you gain 4 life. If an opponent has more life than you, create two 1-1 one, one bluefish creature tokens. If an opponent controls more creatures than you, and draw a card if an opponent has more cards in hand than you. That's a lot of value. It is a lot of value. If you're behind. And no. everything. I don't care about half of what it does, and it only does something if you're behind. Yeah, but I mean, how many times? It is a, it is a catch-up card, which people. I mean, don't... it's perfect for me. I suck at magic, so this would be great. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, dude. This destroys mono red and standard hunter. Is it not? Not really. Why? Um, this... a four drop. It is uh -huh. a four drop, yeah. and it's statted. Defensively. Pretty aggressively for white. Oh, I guess I was gonna uh, say five. Uh, but I'm just I mean, gonna, mono that, that is highly for white, should I say? This in all of magic, I think there's only one other card that's four mana four five. Hmm. Um, so mono red does not really care about its lands, so it's very rare. I feel like if you're playing this, that they'll have more lands than you. The life, obviously, they'll have more life because they're burning you. Mm -hmm. They might have more of the creatures because obviously they're trying to get rid of your stuff. Mm -hmm. The card draw, I doubt that'll happen because they just sling spells and they usually are top decking. I'm just saying. So but then, this is a 4-5 blocker. Yeah, blocker that can make you 2 up blockers potentially and gain 4 life against, I'm just saying, against burn, that's backbreaking. So, so pretty good. I don't know. Because, like, when Omnath, the 4-color one, was around, I felt like even that one wasn't like necessarily like stellar, even up against burn, and that one gained you 4 life a turn. Hmm. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I hate that we're talking about standard right now. I mean, I mean that's to, what we, we do have, during these videos. We have to. Uh, yeah, just like, we'll, we'll talk about this one, obviously, later on. We'll dive yeah. in more with the commanders and all that other kind of fun stuff. I just, in standard, I don't think a catch up card is, is very good. We'll see. All right, let's move on to more new cards. It's a entire cycle of seasons. That's this first one's called Season of Weaving. It's four and two blue for a sorcery. It says choose up to five paws worth of modes. You may choose the same mode more than once. You could use one paw to draw a card, two paws to choose an artifact or creature you control, create a token that's a copy of it, or three paws, return each non-land, non-token permanent to its owner's hand. So yes, paws. What are they? They are specific to the cards themselves. You cannot stack it. It's not a type of counter. So you can only use the paws on the card itself. So you pick five paws. You can do the first mode, draw five cards for six mana. Pretty good. I think that bounce effect's pretty cool, too. Looks like they're all mm -hmm. tripping on shrooms. Maybe they are, dude. They're they, having a vision. They did mention that the... Th Three paw one is always going to be the most powerful, and they made it so you couldn't do it twice. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, six mana bounce a bunch of things, and the draw two cards is still really powerful. Mm hmm. The, the only thing here being is six mana is a lot, and this is a sorcery. So, this is going to take your entire turn. But I mean, it does have that like pseudo removal aspect to it. So, I don't know. Could be, could be actually very solid. Yeah, it'll be really cool. Yeah, they mentioned this like a new modal card. So instead of actually spending the mana in which form you want, it's just six mana, and then you can do whatever modes, I guess. Yeah. I like it. But, yeah, I like it too. Let's move on to the red one. It's called Season of the Bold. Three and two red for sorcery. Once again, choose up to five paws worth of modes. 
You may choose the same mode more than once. The one paw, create a tapped treasure token. Two paws, exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play them. And three paws until the end of your next turn. Whenever you cast a spell, Season of the Bold deals two damage to up to one target creature. No. Oh, you were talking. It sounded really good until you got to that end. This card would be so busted if those treasures were not tapped. Yeah. I mean, like you're just replacing them, right? So, I mean, I still think this is pretty solid. You just take a turn off, and then the next turn you drop, what, a massive Eldrazi? <laughs> Probably not. I don't think Eldrazi are making their way into standard. I'm just... <laughs> I mean, we can talk about Commander here. This is just a sorcery. That is true. Um... I don't know about EDH for this one, to be honest. Nope. I mean, the effects that make more tokens, let's, you can make, like, double the amount of tokens. That'd be sick. I mean, it's, it's like, to me, it's cute. Tap treasure is very slow. Lame. I mean, I understand, like, what you're talking about. Like, it does build up for the next turn. I think this one is probably better in standard than what it would be in commander. Uh, the first two modes I like quite a bit. The third mode, obviously, it's, like, setting up for... Maybe like your big storm payoff. So maybe this and like the new Rouse Eric that we'll talk about, I think, here in a little bit um, could go really well together. Mm -hmm. I mean, I uh, call me crazy, but I kind of think this might replace like those like unexpected windfall kind of feels. I mean, granted, I know I, you're shaking your head and I, and I understand why. But at the same time, like this is just one extra mana. You don't have to discard a card. Yes, the treasures come in tapped, but you still have at least until your next turn to play those cards. And I, I think that's kind of where I'm at with this card. And I think that's really cool because you do get one extra mana. So it kind of offsets that four cost rather than five here. Hmm. Unexpected windfall. Is that the one that's also an instant or is that big score? I think they're, they're both, both instant. Exactly the same. Oh, yeah. perfect there. Yeah, that's another reason why I don't like it. Like the, the comparison here is just like, I, I don't think so. Like, Yes, obviously, if you're playing Prosper, you play this card. Mm -hmm. um, synergizes very well there. But outside of like some very niche decks, I, I don't actually think that I play this. Well, here's something that I find interesting. That ability on the bottom, uh, it is saying Season of the Bold is dealing damage to something. Mm -hmm. How often do we see a card that is now in the graveyard dealing damage? Not That's very cool. often. Can't wait to see that effect on Arena. Just like a little... Lightning bolt shooting from the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the final season they announced. The black one. It is Season of Loss. Three and two black sorcery. Once again, choose up to five paws or the modes. Choose the same mode more than once. First paw. Each player sacks a creature. Two paws. Draw a card for each creature you controlled that died this turn. And three paws. Each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Mm. I love this. This is a good one, right, Dave? Of course you do, David. Well, five mana, each player sacrifices five creatures. Oh, gosh. Like, all your little indestructible, shroudy things. Well, I guess, well, yeah, you know, no, no, this still, because, like, mm -hmm. you don't target with this. So, like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is basically just a board wipe. Also, real quick, isn't this depressing? They have an entire season for losing things. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that wolf back there killed all of his mice family. Well, there, there's also like a snake back there, too. Like on the top left hand corner of the screen. All just of a hound. I ain't nothing but a hound. Oh, yeah. Good card. Good. Yeah, but I mean, this That's reads good. fantastic. You can literally choose the first mode three times and then it sinks right into the second mode. And that's pretty solid. Yeah, I'm yeah. liking the seasons. I like the pause. It's giving me Liliana Dreadhorde general vibes. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice a bunch of things, draw a bunch of cards. You mm -hmm. replaced your stuff and your opponent did not. Yep. Well, let's move on. It's Ral, Crackling Wit. That's right. He is an otter now. This is the cool Japanese anime art. Shane hates it, but I love it. It's two, a blue and a red for a starting loyalty. Planeswalker of four. It's got a static ability that says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a loyalty counter on Rao Crackling Wit. Has a plus one that says, create a 1-1 one, one blue and red otter creature token with prowess, a minus three that says, draw three cards, then discard two cards, and a minus 10 that says, draw three cards, you get an emblem with instant sorcery spells you cast have storm. That's strong. 
It's very strong. How quick can you to that, you think? <laughs> Immediately? Yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say, every casting time you cast non-creatures. a non-creature spell. Yeah. So this, this is what you do. Turns one, two, and three, you plot. Turn four, <laughs> you, drop, you drop a row, and then you do all the things that you just plotted. Yep. So you, then you ult. <laughs> and then you just swarm you off go. and win. Turn, turn four. This is Magical Christmas Land turn four. I love that place. I want to live there. You're going to hate this, Steven, but Storm in Standard. Mm. That it would good. be crazy. I know. I do play a lot of Standard. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Storm in Standard would be wild. It but, would be. Uh, I think it's super doable. I I'm actually... I might actually go and draft this set. Yeah. Cute set, dude. Whenever a Planeswalker has a plus that makes a body to protect it, I mean, yeah. Pretty good. Planeswalker should always protect itself. Come on, man. When they don't, I hate it. I'm looking at this and literally forgetting that it doesn't just have that minus 10. <laughs> like, like, I, I don't even <laughs> see the other two modes. <laughs> or it's not that bad, Hunter, okay? I don't like the other ones when it's like people, but anime oh, art yeah. with otters, it's pretty Anime cute. art with animals yeah i'll take oh yeah i'm fine with that moving on to another calamity beast it's the main one from the story it's maha it's feathers knight three and two black for a six five legendary creature elemental bird it's got flying and it's got trample it's also got ward for discard a card and it just says creatures your opponents control have base toughness one that's so sick dude so I know we're not supposed to talk about this as a commander yet because of commander grids, but I will say if I open this personally, I do not have a mono black deck. I think I will. I think I will. I think, I think this card so, is meh. I like this card. I think it's great. I think it's great too. Art, fantastic as well. Well, this version, yeah, fantastic. I mean, the OG art's fantastic too. The whole set art is fantastic. Mm -hmm. This is a limited bomb. I don't oh, think it's getting past that. The limited bomb that I'll see playing something else too, let me tell you. Moving on to the next card, it's Osteomancer Adept. It's one and a black for a 2-2 two, two creature squirrel warlock. It's got that touch. It has an ability to tap it. It says, until end of turn, you may cast creature spells from your graveyard by foraging in addition to paying their other costs. If you cast a spell this way, that creature enters with a finality counter on it. That's right, foraging is a brand new mechanic. What is it? To forage... Exile three cards from your graveyard or sacrifice a food. If a creature with a finality counter on it would die, obviously you exile is dead. But, yeah, foraging, new mechanic. That seems pretty cool, like a food deck. If you don't want to exile the three cards from your graveyard. Just one food. This card is very good. Yeah. I wish it was legendary. <laughs> I'm glad that it's not. It's just a really good recursion. In Chatterfang, Squirrel Warlock. Yeah, I mean, you can run this as multiple copies of it for standard because I don't know. That's what I would do. This is like just good old old fashioned recursion. It is good old old fashioned recursion. I uh, I did see a lot of people who are making the comparison to Underworld Breach. I they don't actually think that dreams. this. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think that this is Underworld Breach. Like the. Restriction for um, creatures only, and then the finality counter on it means you're not looping, and that's kind of typically what you'd get away with with Underworld Breach. But like, I like this. This is much more of a fair option. It's much more fragile because it's a creature, but this is also like, this is good old fashioned reanimate where it's like, this is how I'm going to get my Addison back into play. Nope. The, the fair magic. <laughs> I, like fair, I like fair magic. Or you can use a uh, nesting ground, take the finality counter off, put it on one of your opponent's things. There you go. <laughs> This is going to see play 1,000%. I believe it will as well. Yep. Steven. And it's cute. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's reminiscent. I hate you for bringing up that word. I want to call back. Well, no one's going to understand that but me, and I hate it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to another squirrel warlock. It's Valley Rotcaller. One in a black for a 1-3 creature squirrel warlock. It's got menace. And says, whenever Valley Rot Collar attacks, each opponent loses X life, and you gain X life, where X is the number of other squirrels, bats, lizards, and rats. Cool. That's, that's super cool, dude. Yeah, you want to play rats, Steven? Boom. I 
think Chatterfang's about to have a lot of new Or Scrolls. Yeah, that's true, too. Chatterfang. I, I almost yeah. bought Chatterfang preemptively for this set, and I'm so glad that I did not. Why, you think well, you're going to get it or something? No, it's it's, gonna, it's getting a reprint, so oh. the price is going to go down. That's what you think? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Typically, reprints mean cost goes down. Uh, that's true. This yeah. is sick. Really sick this card. card is, yeah, it's it's very good. I don't know why this has menace. This is this is already going to get in for a ton of damage, and now it just like slaps you for an additional one as just an added <laughs> insult. Because they want it to oh. live for longer. Yeah, it's on attack, so it's like make it harder to kill. <laughs> yeah, so let me attack you, and then you'll lose five, and then guess what? Coming at you for one more. Share one life, one death. I like it. I like it a lot. I like, uh, it, I like it a lot. Aw, oh, Steven, <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Let's move on. The next card, Tender Wild Guide. One and a green for a 2-2 creature, Possum Druid. It's got an offspring of two. That's right, another new mechanic. What is offspring? Well, you may pay an additional two as you cast the spell. If you do, when this creature enters, create a 1-1 one, one token copy of it. You can tap it to add one mana of any color, and you can also tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. This is nuts. This is kicker. Well, this is squad, but this is nuts. <laughs> Isn't squad kicker? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all everything. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but guys, two uh, mana. Yeah. Oh, sorry, four mana. Two dorks. Is that good? I think that's good. No. Please. This okay. So this this is one of those cards that like I see why this is it rare. Because like two mana for a two two, that's a mana dork, that's that's excellent. But whenever I draft this and I draw this on turn six, the last thing I want to do is drop my two mana two two. So like that's where the squad's relevant. So like this is a card that like I, I feel like offspring is the same way of like trying to fix a, a card that like is not very good in the late game and trying to give it that potential upside of like now you got two of them and they can grow and be big and really cool. Um, I just like if you have this in your opening hand, this is a two drop. That's great. If you top deck it later on, this is a four drop. That's great. I'm here for it. I'm I like right offspring. There's a lot of cool cards that have offspring so far. Um, and I'm terrified of how they could potentially. There's another card we'll be talking about with offspring later, but yeah, I think it's going to be a powerful mechanic. Every time you cast a spell with Offspring, though, I need you to sing an Offspring song. <laughs> Done. Easy. Especially when you it is funny, though, because now, you know, when you think two mana, two, two, you, your mind just goes to the bears. But now it's just like, oh. What about possums? Possums Poss and squirrels. Possums. Possums. Oh, my God. Steven, how did I not think of this? It is a bear. I'm, I'm getting, I'm losing mm. it. It's a two mana two two with upside. Well, yeah, but it's still a two mana two two. I have to say it's a bear. I'm let's I'm move on my to touch. another bear then, shall oh. we? It's not actually a bear. It's a squirrel ranger. That's Thorn Vault Forager. One and a green for a two two creature. Squirrel ranger. Got an ability we could tap it. Add a green and another ability we can tap it. Forage. Add two mana in any combination of colors. And another ability. You can pay three and a green, tap it, search your library for a squirrel card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Dude. This is pushed. Toy. This is super pushed. Another toy for Chatterfang. Just a, another good dork, too. It's just insane to me, the amount of extra power that cards these days have. I mean, what else are they going to do, man? They got to make new cards. Don't play with the old cards. Play with the new ones. Obviously, and I will. Power creep. Hmm. I think yeah. this could have ended without that third ability, and I think it still would have been fine. I completely agree. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah, but where's the fun in that when you can continue to do more stuff? There's still yeah, room just... on the card to write more words. I know. What about flavor text? We don't need flavor text here. Also, real quick, I do want to just highlight, how in the world is this Thorn Vault thing working? Like, gravity-wise tells me... It shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. Apply gravity. He's, he's doing it that. downward, dude. It's a tiny yeah, squirrel, bro. man. They don't weigh much. I don't know. About to fling straight up. Good card, good. It is good card, good. Let's move on. New legendary creature again. It's Camellia, the Seed Miser. One black green for a 3-3 three, three 
legendary creature, Squirrel Warlock. It's got menace. It says other squirrels you control have menace. And whenever you sacrifice one or more foods, create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token. And another ability, you could pay two forage. Put a plus one plus one counter on each other squirrel you control. That's dumb. Do I, do I need to keep saying this about every squirrel? <laughs> Shatterfang wanna, has a new toy. They want to make squirrels great. It's this funny because is... this card actually goes infinite with another card we're going to talk about later. I love infinite. Is Mm -hmm. This is really good. Super I can see, good. I can see squirrels with the calamity beast, like the top end, the the green, uh, black calamity beast in like a standard deck forming here. That's crazy. Yeah. This is really uh, cool. It's it is really cool. <laughs> and if you're playing with a lot of things that can forage for you, every time you sacrifice that thing to forage, that's crazy. I mean, even though, dude, this card's forages for you, too. Like, this card does everything on it. That's nuts. Pay two, sacrifice a food, then you can make a 1-1 one, one squirrel, and then it gets a counter. They I all think do. Shane, I think Shane just highlighted, actually, exactly what it is. The squirrels are nuts. There you go, dude. <laughs> the Did squirrels I say that? are I nuts. <laughs> I didn't even realize I said that. Sorry. Million, but yeah, I think we the main reason about... why I really like these cards, sorry to interrupt, Hunter, is just because, like, it kind of reminds me of D&D &D a little bit because they're like warlocks and rangers and druids Ooh. like it kind of takes me like we we played a campaign one time where it was uh in the Feywild and this is kind of like reminiscent of that for me so it's kind of I, I really do enjoy the set so far yeah, a lot of I really was there, hoping I was really hoping that you would say that you played a D&D &D campaign once as a squirrel yeah <laughs> I was a turtle close enough I don't think we're talking about any turtles today Damn it. but sorry turtle we will go forward after Camellia. This is Phineas, Ace Archer. It's just a green and white for a 2-2 legendary creature, a rabbit archer. It's got vigilance and it's got reach. And it also says whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. That's a token or a rabbit. Then if creatures you control have power 10 or greater, draw a card. Wow. That's a sick pair. It is cool. It's a rabbit. That's a sick <laughs> rabbit bear. I mean, it gets out of control very quickly. Yes, mm. it does. However, it does not put counters on itself. That's fine. Yeah, I think Phineas is uh, pretty good. I think... Uh, I mean, once you get that total power of 10, you're just going to constantly draw cards until this dies, right? Constantly. Pretty solid. <laughs> I'm here for it. Let's move on. We've got... His moistness, it's Glarb, Calamity's Augur. Black, green, blue. For a 2-4 legendary creature, Frog, Wizard Noble. It's got Death Touch. It says you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play lands and cast spells with mana value 4 or greater from the top of your library. And it has the ability you can tap it to surveil 2. I love this card. I, I love hate this art. This is great. I like this card a lot, too. I think it's going to cease play in standard. Um, surveil right now in standard has been everywhere. This just helps. As a 2-4, it's really good on block duty with death touch. I mean, I think it'll see play in standard as well. I mean, 3 mana, 2-4 with death touch ain't nothing to like ignore. And being able yeah. to play lands from the top of your library is pretty solid. There's a mono black two, uh, 3 mana, 2-4 with death touch as well. That is everywhere. Granted, it does a lot. But see, it's really good. I don't like the surveil on this. Why? Why? Because helps you these, manipulate the top of your deck. I that's exactly why I don't like it. Because these kinds of cards, where I can look at the top card of my library, I want to know that I have been like completely crushed and defeated. Huh. And that way, whenever I draw that card, I'm like, oh, what is it? I'm like, oh wait, that's right. I already knew it's useless. But this like helps you get out from underneath that. So constant. wait. Like, wait, it's, wait, 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 it's wait, wait. fantastic. <laughs> You're telling me Sarcasm. the reason you don't like this card is because it helps you too much? Well, no, 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 no. Okay, here's the thing. This card is good. It just, it disrupts the typical play pattern that I have of like, oh, oh man, God. I really, I really need like a, 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 a land. And then I look at the top card of my library and it's like, well, that's a 10 drop. Why'd I put that on the deck? I'm never casting that. So just rail it away. <laughs> oh, wait, just kidding. You're sarcastic. <laughs> you called it, Steve. I know. 
All it right. takes the heart of the cards out of the game, Yugi. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. But again, we will talk about this legendary creature more in our commander grades. Yes. Speaking of legendary creatures, let's move on to another. It's Castrol, the Wind Crested. Three white blue for a four or five legendary creature bird scout. It's got flying and says whenever one or more birds you control deal combat damage to a player, choose one. You may put a bird creature card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield with the finality counter on it, or put a plus one plus one counter on each bird you control, or draw a card. Bird. bird. Uh, I hate bird tribal. Yeah, why? bird tribal sucks. Uh, to answer your question, why when I was getting into Magic and I didn't want to spend too much money, I went on the Facebook Marketplace and this guy was selling Commander decks for twenty bucks, and I bought a Bird Tribal deck, and it was awful. Well, it was twenty bucks. <laughs> get what you pay for, bud. I was going to say, say real cards. He spent twenty dollars on a Facebook dude, Marketplace. Dude, this guy has no idea the amount of money he's losing. I I just scammed him with twenty bucks for a Commander deck. <laughs> Little did I know, cards can cost one penny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like birds. Um, <clears throat> this is reanimation in Azorius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really weird. Really cool. You meant to say it is really cool. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. I think it is cool. I think this card is fine. Coming in at four mana. I'm sorry. Coming in at five mana. I think that this is probably a little bit too expensive. Maybe potentially. Still a four or five flyer. If we're talking about standard, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, this thing could be a five mana seven seven flyer. I still think it's too slow in <laughs> standard. I don't think I don't think it's terribly slow. Just because if you are running bird tribal, this doesn't care about it itself attacking. It just cares about one or more birds. Yep. So building up that board state prior, I think, is a pretty strong asset to this card. Don't get me wrong. I mean, like I do agree with you. I think that all three modes are, are relatively powerful. It helps to get your little birdies that have already died back. It buffs your 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 team, and it also like helps you to draw more threats. But I don't know something about five mana cards. It's, if you've been watching this channel for long enough, five is kind of that magical number where I start to like flinch. But Dave, <laughs> it's a unicorn. Bird. That's a it's funny. It's a it's narwhal. A finch, you mean? <laughs> finch. Because a finch is a bird. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Ain't talking about kits anymore. Nope. It's Marera. Oh, we actually, we're talking about kits. <laughs> talking about kits. It's Marera Trash Technician. One. Red green for a two four legendary creature raccoon warrior. Says the beginning of your first main phase. Add a red or green for each raccoon you control. It also says whenever you expend four, you gain three life. That's right. Another new mechanic, expend. What is it? Well, it's just playing magic. Uh, you expend four as you spend your fourth total mana to cast spells. So if you spend four mana, you gain three life. Uh, whenever you expend eight, excel the top two cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. How do we feel about expend? I think it's kind of cool, Kindred. actually. Kindred. Yeah, I think it's kind of like, cool. We mentioned earlier, like anti burn. Th this is an anti burn card. This this coming down, True. relatively cheap. It's got a big booty. You could probably gain three life every turn off of this, be with the amount of mana ramp that this is doing. I hope so. That's really cool. I wonder how small these things are in real life. Because look at the size of those leaves compared to it. They're those tiny. are just really big leaves. <laughs> That's also true. I don't know. <laughs> I think, uh, I think this is very good. I don't know if I like Expend just because it's just a mechanic that just triggers by you playing Magic. Yeah. yeah. What's oh, that I like about getting advantage on playing the game? Let me let me get this straight. The Boros player who like half of their cards say whenever you attack doesn't like another card that's just like whenever you play Magic. <laughs> It isn't, I mean, that's literally all of magic. I mean, I knew Hunter was going to like this. There's not a plus one on this card. You're annoyed, <laughs> it's you're also right. missing a color. He likes white. Yeah, you might be right. Who knows? I don't know. We'll talk about this more as a potential commander later. Moving on to another Calamity Beast. It's Igra, Eater of All. Three 
black green for a 6-6 six, six legendary creature elemental cat. It's got ward sacrifice of food. Other creatures are food artifacts in addition to their other types and have pay two, tap, sack, you gain three life. And whenever a food is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on Igra, Eater of All. This is pretty sick. Very cool. I mean, I, yeah. That ward is basically ward sacrifice a creature. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It could also I mean, just be a food. They're never. <laughs> how, how often do you just have food? <laughs> Well, if you're playing the Lord of the Rings deck and you're playing with the Hobbits, got some food. I mean, <laughs> you're in right. In this set, I feel like there's going to be a ton of food. So that's true. In standard, it'll probably be a little easier. But then on an EDH table, yeah, it's sacrifice a creature. Yeah, this is the card I uh, four mentioned earlier. That kind of goes off with Camellia. Oh, yeah. I see why. I could see that. Make food. Make some food. Make food, make squirrel. Food are squirrel. And squirrel, yeah, so I had squirrel as food. Actually, that's sad because they are they are food to that <laughs> big tiger back there. These are mice. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, that's a rabbit, but is that a tiger? That looks like a panther. That's it's definitely a rabbit. a rabbit. It's a cat. It's like well, a if we're being specific. Cat. It's an elemental cat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> but it's not a food. It's a Let's friend. Let's go ahead and move on to a brand new land. It is Three Tree City. It's a legendary land that says as it enters, choose a creature type. You can tap to add a colorless, or you could pay two, tap it, choose a color, add an amount of mana of that color equal to the number of creatures you control of the chosen type. Just itching <laughs> to repaint Guy's Cradle, dude. Just itching. Guy's Cradle, uh, Nykthos. It's, uh, it's pretty similar to those. I think this probably is going to be pretty expensive. They also announced that there are five different versions in the form of art. Awesome. So, so this one is the winter, and there's different seasons. Yep. Yo, can I say it? Reminiscent. No. Okay. Yeah, um, this, this is a good card. As someone that likes to play Kindred decks, this I is agree. probably... I'm going to pick it up for I every agree. Spark. Yep. Ooh, I disagree. I, I think Why? this specifically goes really well with the go wide Kindred. But if you're playing like maybe some of the bigger Kindred um, or just like mid rangey, I don't know if this is all that good because you do have to sink mana into it. So, like, for example, if you're playing like Knights, you generally don't have a whole lot. You might have like three or four in play. So, this is what would tap for two if you got four. I don't know if that's going to be worth it. You had three knights, it's three mana. Yeah, but you have to sink two into pay it. Two though, because it's, it's like positive. It's free. and it, it's not it's equal. But yeah, I mean, on the bright side, I was looking for some lands to finally synergize with Omo. So shut up. Finally, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love this card. I think I it's pretty cool. Stick by my statement. This card will be expensive. Stick by it. Yeah. Comes in untapped. It, you're Let's right. Let's move on. It's another Valley card. It's Valley Quest Caller. One and a white for a 2-3 creature rabbit warrior. It says whenever one or more other rabbits, bats, birds, and or mice you control, enter, scry one. It also says other rabbits, bats, birds, and mice you control. Get plus one, plus one. Go That's ahead, Shane. Massive lord. That's a lord on steroids. That's a four. That's a four lord. It's two, a two three lord is very good. I like oh. it. They're it's going a on a quest. <laughs> this will see play. There's going to be a weird. I think there might be just be just mono white animal deck. Mice. I was going to say Boros mice. Like this would still slot right into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just a lot of card advantage there. Just scrying every time something enters. <laughs> good card is good. A good card is good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Warren, War Leader. Two. Two white for a 4 4 creature rabbit knight. It's got offspring of two. 
And it says, whenever you attack, choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature token that's tapped at attacking, or attacking creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Offspring is cool. Cool. Yes, yeah. That one's kind six of expensive. Mana. I mean, if you pay the offspring, it's six yeah, mana, yeah, yeah. and then you get two of the attack triggers. That's true. I feel like the bottom one's a little stronger, in my opinion, right? The attack I mean, you just can plus one, plus one? Yeah, that one seems more strong or stronger. If you paid six, you can get both. Mm -hmm. Why not do both? Okay, you six, told me. Bring in with uh, your creatures okay. and trigger twice. It's a it's a rabbit leader. I love it. It is it's a lord. A rabbit war leader. Yo, specifically. almost. Hmm. All right, let's move on. It's Thunder Trap Trainer. One and a blue for a one, two creature otter wizard with offspring of you gotta pay four extra for this one. It says when this creature enters, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non creature, non land card from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Man, no. Six mana to do that twice. I mean, to, to David's point, it makes it relevant at the end of the game too, but just its original one seems pretty good. I think this card is, is actually very good. Yeah? Yeah. I like Do... replacing cards. I like hand-tripping and drawing cards, and this is selective draw with potential upside. For Don't six, it's like a memory deluge, but as a creature. You paying the offspring cost? I mean, look, we, we always talk about, like, flicker, bounce, reanimate, do all those kind of shenanigans. This is an enter's ability, so, like, there are ways that you can potentially abuse this. It's true. Make copies of them. Two mana, two mana, one, two. I don't know if you're offspringing. Offspringing, I guess that's a word. This very often. I mean, I, I think this is kind of the thing of offspring is I'm going to treat this as if it doesn't have it. And if I draw this in the late game, then it does have it. I, I don't think I'm ever going to look at one of these offspring cards and be like, oh, you know what? I could take a turn off and like a turn or two from now, I could do the bigger version of this card. It's like, no, I'm, I'm going to play it for its mana value, and if I happen to have it later on, it's got more relevance. Yeah, I guess that's basically like Kicker, right? I got the mana, spend it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Kicker. Let's move on to another card. We got classes back in this set. This card is called Artist's Talent. It's one and a red for an enchantment class. When it enters, it says, when you cast a non-creature spell, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. You can pay two and a red to level it up. And once it's leveled up, it says non-creature spells. You cast cost one less to cast. And level up to level three for two and a red again. It says if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent. An opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. A lot going on in this card. Artiste. This, um, this synergizes really well with like Storm Otters. Storm otters, you're right. It Storm does. Storm otters, otters and ferrets. The ferret. This right? card is. This card is so good. <laughs> I know. There's a lot going on. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It 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 cantrips for you, just as a level one, right? You got to discard first, but yeah. Yeah, but that's pretty good. 100. percent Yeah. And making things cheaper, very good. And then Steven, I'm going to say the last thing. And then if you get to that last one, dealing more damage, really good. I did the thing, even where like I read the card again, sorry. That was, yeah, you didn't um, do it that good. I didn't want yeah, to reread it all, dude. That's what I'm saying. Sorry. We, we know the secret. You just don't read good. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of mana, though, to take turns off. It very much so is. And that's why like, I, I think that this might actually only be like the first or maybe first two modes. Yeah. Uh, the artwork yeah. on this, however, is a banger. I love the artwork here. He's spilling his paint. Yeah. Pretty cute. Moving on to Dream Do Entrancer. Two green, blue for a 3 4 creature. Frog Wizard. It's got reach. It says when it enters, tap up to one target creature and put three stun counters on it. If you control that creature, draw two cards. <laughs> interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Tap your own shit to draw. You can tap itself. Reminds me of the Psychic Frog. A little bit with the art. Yeah. yeah. 
Quite yeah. literally, it's a psychic frog. I like uh, this a lot. You can make one of your opponent's creatures irrelevant for probably the rest of the game. And if you have a creature that's not doing anything anymore, just draw two cards off of it. So 1-1, one, one, yeah. That's pretty strong. It is. I like it. I'm here for it. Simic. Dream do entrance. Simic. Like Simic, yeah. That is right. Um, but yeah. Next up, Clement the Worrywart. It's one green blue for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature frog druid. It's got vigilance and says whenever it or another creature you control enters, return up to one target creature you control with lesser mana value to its owner's hand. It also says frogs you control have tap. Add a green or blue, spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. It's so good. <laughs> That's really good. It was the it flavor is. that like the creatures, or the, they're supposed to be frogs that are like jumping out of the board back into your hand. They're bouncing. Oh, yeah, I love that, dude. Oh, I love this art I, too. Holy shit. Yeah, I love everything about this card. Also, that's kind of really weird wording on that. So to cast a creature spell, why why do you think they chose that instead of just like to cast creature spells? Am I missing something? Is there like a weird ruling restriction that's going over my head here? Hmm. That's mana only to cast. What's your question? The the wording on the mana ability of the the third aspect of this card. He's saying, so so it, yeah. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell, versus what we typically see with like spend this mana only to cast creature spells. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Singular. Who knows? Yep. Yeah, but it's it's like not even condemn. It's like it's not shortening it. it. This actually elongates it. So like. They took up more space on the card. Let's get R&D on the phone. <laughs> Help. I will say this is probably my favorite art just because like the like Simic. Dude, it's super Simic. And the border is fantastic. Yeah, it's happening. I'm a yeah, huge. Really I'm just cool. like looking on the sides like uh, little bulbs that pop out the circular parts of it. And it's like, oh, I'm like kelp over here. There's some. I don't yeah, know. I think I'm ready to talk about the last card we just talked about. I think it goes really well in this deck. I'm the tapping last it. Card we just talked about. The frog that he he had time to digest it. Bounce frogs. Yeah. Right. Like you play that frog, tap Simic it, frogs. draw the two cards, and then you use bounce the, the this one that card's you... ability to yeah. bounce the card back. Yeah, I'm I'm here for the leapfrog game. I'm gonna yeah. maybe build this. Maybe Steven All right. should. Let's move on to a card that's exclusively commander, but it's the buy a box promo. It's Flubs the Fool. It's green, blue, and red for a 05 legendary creature frog scout. It says you may play an additional land on each of your turns. It also says whenever you play a land or cast a spell, draw a card if you have no cards in hand. Otherwise, discard a card. I love this <laughs> so much. Everything Dude, the about this. The flavor text is amazing. He knows exactly where he's going and exactly how he isn't getting there. <laughs> this. Like we can't really talk about the cards since it's only legal in Commander, but like I, I this is my new best friend. I, I love it. This is so, much. so weird. It's super weird. So I don't. It's me. great. This is amazing. You're trying <laughs> to play is... Hellbent. It makes you, yeah, and then well, everything yeah, that you do is just drawing cards. <laughs> that's really funny. I mean, actually. this is fantastic because even if you have no cards in hand and you draw that top card, and it's a land. Normally, you're always pissed. You're like, God dang it. Why couldn't my deck do the one thing? Why couldn't it get me that one card? You well, play did. the land, you draw a card. And if you happen to draw another land, you play that land and draw another card. So good, dude. But you're probably only casting this once you have no cards. Right? No. I mean, no, I it makes know. me discard. I I'm dropping this immediately. All right. Fair. Again, we will talk about this in Commander Grades. Maybe you cast stuff for Madness. Who knows, dude? I mean, why don't we just give the grade beforehand? A, I'm at an A. a. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's move on to the Precon decks. That's right. We got the face commanders for each deck. First up, Animated Army is helmed by Bello, Bard of the Brambles. It's one red and a green for a 3-3 legendary creature, Raccoon Bard. It says during your turn, each non-equipment 
artifact and non-aura enchantment you control with mana value 4 or greater is a 4-4 elemental creature in addition to his other types and has indestructible haste and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player draw a card that's a Jesus lot of words Christ, dude, dude. Oh my a lot God. of words gruel dude gruel this this is that cute little raccoon this is just like i'm not this doing is rocket anything the anymore. raccoon yeah. look at him he's pissed I like zombie There's, eyes i mean yeah. if we're being specific rocket would have technically have been like an artificer whereas this is a bard so you know we okay, can't i'll give it to you but it cares about artifacts i mean i i understand i'm just saying like it just doesn't make sense and it has like v vine things handing it stuff dude that's Groot. Like Groot? oh shit <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's like not even talk about the cards just keep talking about the art i mean it's a commander card there's only so much we can say I in know. this video for it but yeah, yeah this is obviously aggressive. yeah Start getting some awesome equipment and enchantments down. Draw Start cards, win the game. Beating, dude. beating people with artifacts and enchantments. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. But uh, yeah, that's the bellow. Pretty cool. I just swing, dude. I love gruel. How about Golgari? It's squirreled away. This one is helmed by Hazel of the Root Bloom. It's two black and green for a 3-5 legendary creature squirrel druid has ability we can tap it pay to life tap x untapped tokens you control at x mana in any combination of colors and at the beginning of your end step create a token that's a copy of target token you control if that token is a squirrel instead create two tokens that are copies of it i'm guessing this deck has a lot of squirrels yep <laughs> It has yeah. much more happy vibes than what I would anticipate from a Golgari commander. I don't know. Look at all their faces. Squirrel They're away. like pretty startled. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen a radish before, dude. <laughs> here's, here's a radish. They go, oh, you are our leader, Hazel. Jesus. Um, yeah, so I think it's pretty cool because you can create a token that's a copy of any token. Solid. Yeah, can be treasures. Can but if be it's a food. squirrel, you're getting double. True. It's cool. Got good versatility. It is indeed. Next up is the deck called Peace Offering. It's helped by Miss Bumbleflower. It's one green, white, and blue for a one-five legendary creature, Rabbit Citizen. It's got vigilance and says, whenever you cast a spell, target opponent draws a card. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It gains flying until end of turn. This is the second time this ability has resolved this turn. Yeah, draw two cards. Wow. Group hug. We did I <laughs> I I swear to God, I if I get this deck, I'm just gonna lean into it and just say You're you're gonna swing at Miss Bumbleflow? <laughs> <laughs> this is the wonderful thing. So we typically randomize what commander decks we upgrade, and I think this is the one that all of us are looking at with just like fingers crossed of please not this. <laughs> and that's not because this card is bad, it's just like this is an archetype that all of us hate. We don't normally play group hug, but hey, I'll give you guys some. We, we, we will do the upgrade perfect. Shane's an outlaw. Well. Dude, the amount of deep cuts are in no one's understanding. Not salty. Moving on to the final commander, it is the face of Family Matters. It's Zinnia, Valley's Voice. It's blue, red, white for a 1-3 legendary creature, Bird Bard. It's got flying, and it says it gets plus X, plus zero, where X is the number of other creatures you control with base power one. And creature spells you cast have offspring of two you're going That's wide right. you can definitely go wide and make a bunch of one one copies of everything that you own it's just it's, it's so well i guess base power so if you pump them it still counts as yeah one, right okay mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i was like man this sucks because like what is it gonna do you're gonna you're one turn kill someone what do you mean yeah, it's gonna hit no i mean I, yes hard. yes i'm what i'm saying is like if it was like if it was the other way where it's just power one like yeah you don't want to put any kind of like pump effects I think it's funny that we just got an Eldrazi commander that you can pay two mana to copy your Eldrazi, and now we get another Eldrazi commander that you can pay two mana to copy your Eldrazi. Okay, but not all birds are Eldrazi, Dave. Yeah, but all Eldrazi are birds? Uh, sure. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Because yeah, birds aren't real. 
Oh God, here we go. <laughs> you see the government. All right. And that is going to do it for us today. If you guys liked that video, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And as always, we will talk about our favorite cards of the day. There are plenty to choose from. We will start with Dave. Dave, what was your favorite? David, you want to go at the same time? I was going to say, I, I've actually got two, but my my first favorite is Flubs, hands down. Like, there's it's, that's the correct cool. choice, but that one's not really in the set. So my favorite card from the actual set itself um, is probably going to be a Steomancer Adept, just because I, I love the design of that card. Yeah. Steven, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I mine is definitely Flub for sure, but since it's not part of the set, I will say his royal moistness glarb. It's flubs. The all other choices are wrong. Flubs. Okay. Shane, do you have a favorite? I like Clement the Worry Wart. I want to be a snake frog. Uh, I think my favorite is gonna probably be Maha, the Calamity Beast Owl. Uh, because I think it's a good card. And also, if you're a '90s kid, do you remember Amanda Bynes' show and Maha? That was the thing. Wow, what a way to end that video, huh? <laughs> yeah, comment down below. What was your guys' favorite card we talked about today? <laughs> if you guys haven't already know, we have all of our commons and uncommons from this set also posted on our Instagram. If you wanted to follow along, check that link in the description. It's at Guys at Magic, as well as Twitter and TikTok. Same situation, at Guys at Magic. On the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your added support. It really does mean the world to us. If you guys wanted to see what they're seeing, which is not here on YouTube, check the link in the description as well and consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Later. <laughs> I want to be a frog. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> I, next time you guys will see me, I'll be moved. Finally. <laughs>